my name's Harold. Uh, today I'm going to start off with uh, building my first steam engine. Last last week I built some uh, flywheels, and uh, of course I only need one for the per engine. But uh, <clears throat> Mr. Pete has made a, a vertical steam engine with a side valve on it, and I'm, that's what I'm going to do. And when he got through with his uh, video, he had uh, someone put uh, the, their email address up there so you could order drawings, you know, and, and the drawings are pretty neat. They're, they make it a lot easier. Um, well, anyway, they tell you, you know, what to build and how many. And right on the first page of the drawings, they give a list of all the nuts and screws and such that you need. So <clears throat> I know that I can't buy a number four tap down at, uh, you know, uh, Redneck Supply. So I logged on to McMaster Car, and for every nut, and I, well, not for an every nut, that's, that's the problem. For every screw, set screw, whatever, I ordered a, a tap to cut that size thread, and then I ordered the set screws and the, so on. And I got down to a 540 nut. And I thought to myself, what in the world are we going to do with this 540 nut? Because I don't see a bolt. Which is, well, you know, that's what happens when you're a dumb old redneck. You don't think it out good. But anyway, I ordered all that junk from that master car, and when I got it, I was going over the plans, and I discovered where the 540 nut goes. It's on to uh, a particular shaft there, and you've got a thread that shaft 540. I don't have a, a die, 540 die. Didn't order one. So if you're going to build this engine and you're going to get that set of drawings, every time that you see any kind of a thread there, you order the appropriate piece, whether it's a die or a tap. Go ahead and order it because you're you're going to need it before you put the thing together. Of course, I'm waiting on a couple of things. I needed a, a quarter inch reamer, and that hadn't arrived yet. Didn't be in tomorrow maybe, and uh, I needed several you know several different little tools, and I ordered them, and maybe they'll arrive tomorrow. But I have enough stuff to get started. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to get started on the thing and see how far we can get before. I absolutely have to stop for for tools. I've been a, a fan of Donald Duck for a real long time, and uh, Mickey Mouse also. So, uh, you know, I, I have to go ahead and uh, tell you a little duck joke here. Seems this uh, this duck goes into a bar, you know, and he sort of quackingly says to the, the bartender, have you got any grapes? And the bartender told him, no, I don't have any grapes. So the duck leaves. Next day the duck comes waddling back in and he comes up to the bartender and he says, uh, hey, he says, uh, you got any grapes? The bartender says, no, I don't have any grapes. And I'll tell you what, if you come back in here again asking for grapes, I'm going to nail your bill to the, to the bar here, you know. So the duck goes on away. Next day, here comes that same old duck again. He comes waddling in there and comes up to the bar and asks the bartender, says, hey, he says, uh, you got any nails? The bartender says, no. He says, I don't have any nails. The duck says, well, in that case, have you got any grapes? Hey, what can I say? I'm a redneck. All right, so we're going to do the main shaft. It's supposed to be steel, two inches long. And uh, it says here 0.1875 in diameter. So this was once an old rusty bolt, and I cut the threads off, and then I threaded the end of it for some reason. I don't really know why, but this is what we're going to use for the uh, for the main shaft. I don't think that I'm going to put it between centers to uh, turn it. We'll see if it. I don't know what it does without doing that. Really wobbling around, huh? Well, let's see what we get. Okay, so I got the uh, the main shaft. I cut it off with a hacksaw. 
uh, it's pretty well the right size cutting that bolt was rough that bolt was hard and this end here I'll just have to sand down with uh, with a disc sander in fact I'll bring it to the exact two inches with the disc sander it's a little bit over right now but that's the best I could do considering how considering how fragile it is and uh, being stuck in the lathe like that Well, everything seems to get in my way, so I decided to wear these cover all safety goggles. I don't know about that. This is a little cool water. I guess I could have done it with a bench grinder. Probably should. But I didn't. At least I didn't yet. Let's see how close we're getting down to two inches. This is 100,000 is too big. Actually, uh, 200,000 is too long. So I'm going to work on that and I'll get right back to the camera. Okay, so I went ahead and uh, put it on the bench grinder and got to 2 inches point zero zero one, which is pretty close to 2 inches where I come from. And so there's the main shaft finished. A little wider on one end than it is on the other, and I'm worried about that because when I get down to this end down here, I want it to still be thick enough, you know. In fact, I want to clean up this end down here and still be the right width, I guess. Thickness is not the right word, width is the right word. We'll see. Okay, so. I've got it squared off. There's the layout marks on it there. Where to do stuff. And I'm going to knock it off for the day. And when I come back, I guess I'll probably bore the cylinder. Uh, both the little cylindrical holes. And then I'll cut out, cut this piece out and cut that piece out of it. And... That'll make it look a lot better. That's uh, the side of this thing's a little rough because it's extruded aluminum, but I'm not going to smooth it off because then it won't be an inch thick anymore, and I won't be to the right dimensions. So far, I'm within a little over a thousandth in every direction, so we're going to stick to that. Well, here we go. Another day, another dollar. <coughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to find uh, the X and Y here, then I'm going to do the bore. It's, uh, this little guy right here. I'm going to do the bore here and here, but I'm not going to ream them yet. Uh, I don't think I have a quarter inch reamer. I've got a half inch reamer, and I may I, I may well ream the half inch hole. The quarter I may have to wait until the reamer I've got ordered arrives. I'm going to look through my stuff over there. I think most of my reamers are taper reamers, which is not too good straight holes. Taper reamers can get you in a lot of trouble anyway. But let's go ahead and find the uh, Y. Yeah. 
Phoenix. I could uh, start drilling, get that part of it on the road. We'll see how much I can drill before I run out of room. That's the trouble with having this kind of a machine is it's got a round column so if you have to raise it up or down or anything you get completely off of where you were. Makes it really hard to center things up, I can tell you that. Wish I had little stub drills, but I don't. But I do have some uh, end mills that are about the right size. That's enough for the camera for now. We'll turn it back on later. Okay, so here we go with uh, the second hole, which is uh, for the uh, for the little uh, valve. both holes drilled next to be the reaming. Okay, today this being another day because I got lazy, we're gonna we're gonna make the cylinder head and uh, calls for aluminum an inch diameter and the closest I can come to that of course is this piece of inch and a half. But we're gonna we're gonna try to work to these specifications and make the cylinder head. I stopped working on the uh, block part of the thing because I still need a uh, quarter inch reamer. At least that's my excuse for that. But we'll go ahead and start on the on the cylinder head. Got to cut her down to, to an inch first.
Okay, my mic says 101 and a half, so I'm just going to take a spring cut and call that good. Uh, that's one hundred and one thousandth, so I don't know, it might cool off and shrink a little bit. We're going to go with that. The uh, I say one hundred and one inch and one thousand. There we go. Anyway, so I need to do this little part of the, of the cylinder head here and try to get it down right. It looks like, uh, well, I guess it's .120 in depth back in there. I'll read this a little bit to make uh, absolutely for certain and then trim it down. Oh, okay. So what I've got going here is uh, turning down this small piece, which is, uh, this little piece right here it's going to be a half inch diameter and it's going to be 120 thousandths in and I know I'm going to I'm going to make it right because I set up a dial indicator right there and this is the zero point for it I'll come back a little bit further but I'm cutting in 115 thousandths and then when I get down to diameter I'll take that last five of depth off of there just a sort of a clean up and there's no point in me doing this on camera you've seen plenty of things turned on camera so I'll just cut that off <laughs> 